It may well be ridiculously hot outside in the UK at the moment, but I have seven metres of aubergine coloured velvet and I want to make a gown that makes me look as if I may have had something to do with my rich husband's mysterious disappearance. And so I am going to make another Charm Patterns Patreon Society gown. That Emmy is wearing my first one in this gorgeous blue velvet. Oh, the drama. Look at it. So beautiful. I really enjoyed sewing this pattern. There's a lot of nice techniques. I'm not happy with this front bit. I feel like this should be more of a point. So I want to work on getting that correct this time. But everything else is just look at the gathering. <laughs> The gathering, and if we turn her around, the hood, the drama of that hood. Mm. I've pinned it because Emmy is a lot less horizontally blessed than I am. Um, Godets in the skirt as well, which I had never sewn before, and they're not perfect. There's a slight pucker in that one, actually, but you can't see it really when the dress is down. But, you know, there's skills here that I want to hone. And we love a bishop's sleeve. Come on. I've said it once. I'll say it again. The drama. Have an important decision to make now. Do I want the pile of the velvet to go... The correct way, or the correct way, in inverted commas, so that it's smooth when you rub your hand down it. Or do I want it to go the other way, like this, because that tends to give a richer colour. So this is with the pile going upwards. So upside down. Let me show you the other way. So this is with the pile going the correct way may not look different on camera but I think it actually looks nicer the other way and that's what I did with the blue one so this is it's rough to touch that way it's smooth going up that way but it just looked less shiny this way I think I prefer the less shiny look so I think we're gonna go upside down I'm sure you all do this, but you know when you look at the, the pattern layout for cutting and you think, nah, I could I could do this way more economically. That's what I've done here. So this is the bishop sleeve cuff. That's meant to be cut on a separate piece, but I knew I could fit it in there. So I'm obviously going to cut it out now. I mean, yeah, it is like it's close, but close, but not impossible. Cutting out on the floor. Cleo! <laughs> Cutting out on the floor is a full body workout. I don't care what anyone says. I don't need to go to the gym. <laughs> I wish I had room for a cutting table. This is my hair's tied back. It's drying. It's a bit crazy. I dyed it earlier. Come here. Cleo's behind the camera. She's going to knock it over. Don't! <laughs> the whiskers give her away. Stop it! <laughs> She's a pain. Come here. Come to the front of the camera. Anyway, I've cut out most of the bodice pieces. I've just got the sleeve and the front bodice. And I've cut out four of the six go days so I've got so the sleeve the front bodice another two go days the skirt panels which are massive they're huge and they're cut on the fold and then four hood pieces to cut out this pattern is a lot to cut out and it's very like there's a lot of fabric it's a fabric hungry pattern but you can make a like a shorter version that's less dramatic 
and I haven't tried that yet but I think I might try it um I think it's like a knee length dress and you can have like little short like puff sleeves if you want or you could still have the bishop sleeve I'm not really a puff sleeve kind of girl I'm more of a bishop sleeve kind of girl so I might make one like a more casual one to wear to Goodwood Revival in September because I'm going there and this pattern is stretch but it still looks vintage and I've got a ton of stretch fabrics so I can definitely find something nice to make one of these out of I'm not sure what yet what pattern I want it to look retro I just know that like I just I need to get a move on with a pattern for that and so far I have nothing so this could be a good option anyway back to cutting out before I decide to give up for the day there she is there's the monster don't be camera shy now look at her plotting she's an evil genius it's been about two weeks since I started this sewing project and it has been the worst two weeks that I've had for ages. I'm currently in bed with a banging headache and it's I think it's the weather because we just had a really torrential downpour um, and I do get pressure headaches so I went downstairs and washed my hair, came back up and just it was just crushing um, and my plan is to sew today but I don't know if I'm going to be able to. I really need to. I've had such a stressful like couple of weeks and sewing is really my like calming safe activity but I just don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it today. Ugh. I'll report back. <laughs> I didn't want to sew today but I knew if I didn't start I would never do it and annoyingly I have to cut out fabric before I continue with this project so I am scrabbling around on the floor even though I don't feel great but I know mentally it will make me feel so good to get this done so I'm kind of having to force myself to do this and I'm in my Harry Potter pajamas I'm in, in fact, I'm in my crappy Harry Potter pyjamas that I use for dyeing my hair normally. So that's what this stain is. They don't even match. These are two different pairs of Harry Potter pyjamas and the bottoms have holes in. I don't care. There's like a big hole here somewhere. I don't care. I don't care. I'm just, I'm just getting this cut out. And then, you know... I'm just going to make a start. Sometimes just starting is all you need to do, you know? So that's me today. I'm just I'm just going to make a start because I want to do this project. Um it's going to be a relatively satisfying sew because one it's going to be quite easy. I've sewn it before, I know it fits, so I don't need to do any like complicated fitting or anything, so that's a bonus. Two, it's a freaking awesome pattern and it makes me feel like a badass, so that's always great. Three, it's velvet, you know, it's got to be done, it has to be done. So yeah, I'm just, um, I haven't even got that much left to cut out. I'm doing these skirt panels, which are massive, but there's only two of them, so it's not so bad. So I'm just going to cut those out, and then I need to cut four, two pairs of pieces as well. So um, four, four more pieces. 
So we're getting there. So this is quite interesting and terrifying. So this is one of the skirt panels. You see how big it is? It's cut on the fold, but you have to slice up the middle of it because that's where the godets go. And it's terrifying cutting into the middle of your massive pattern piece because, you know, I'm not sure I have enough fabric to cut it again if it's wrong. The first time I did this, I didn't cut it. I left it for ages. And I was like, oh, I've got to cut it now. I've got to cut it for the go days. But I was absolutely freaking terrified to cut it. But I'm going to do it now. I know it works. It's fine. You'll get your head stuck. I'll have to get the fire brigade to come and rescue you and you'll be embarrassed. Do you want that for yourself? Yeah, you'll look ashamed. I had seven metres of this velvet and this is all I have left. Not even a metre. Probably like two thirds of a metre length. Probably not going to get anything out of this. Might manage to get a top out of it if I use all the scraps, but this is a fabric hungry pattern. Excuse my face in the angle, but I'm sitting on the sofa with a crippled back right now because I've been cutting out fabric on the floor for the past God knows how long. I really need a cutting table. I cannot keep doing this. I'm 38 years old. I'm getting too old to be crawling around on the floor. Like, I'm going to have to sit down for like an hour at least now to rest my back because it hurts and my knees hurt <coughs> and I'm losing my voice. But everything's cut out. Yes, I hate cutting out. But everything's cut out. Now I just need to do all the tailor's tacks. Um, make sure I've put all the notches in because I know I definitely didn't cut the notches on the skirt panels. So I need to just snip those in. I've still got the pattern pieces attached, so it's easy enough. Um, but I did all the notches on everything else. So yeah, I need to do the tailor's tacks and then I can start sewing. This is going to be a slow project, I think. I, I kind of want this to be more mindful sewing because mentally I'm a little bit fragile at the moment. Um, just because I've got a lot of stuff going on and I'm, I've been feeling really good for a really long time and I'm in a little bit of a slump now, so I need to get myself out of it. And I know I can do that. Um, I will do it. I feel a lot better than I did a couple of days ago. So, but yeah, sewing is one of the ways I do that. So I think I want to make this a more slow and mindful sewing. So yeah, that's the plan anyway. <laughs> Okay, so I am doing tailor's tacks, which are basically, is a way of marking the fabric using thread rather than chalk or a pen. This fabric is very dark and also chalk just rubs off really easily, I find. So I prefer to use tailor's tacks um, because they stay in. So I don't know if some of you probably know what tailor's tacks are. I can't pick my needle up. My nails have actually grown quite long for the first time ever. I've been taking a different supplement. Um, and yeah, now I'm struggling to pick up needles and things. But anyway, so I'll do a demonstration in case anybody doesn't know what tailor's tacks are. Please ignore my top. It's the one I wear for dyeing my hair. So that's what this is. It's not food. OK, um, so I've got thread on the needle, double. Um, and I'm putting my tailor's tacks in here where these pattern markings are. So you just basically think of a cross. So just a cross with four points. So I go from one side of the cross to the other, making sure I go through both pieces of fabric. And I want to leave a, a tail that's probably about that long. So that's about four or five centimeters and then I'm going to go back and go the other way for the cross so I've just gone horizontally now I'm going vertically through both bits of fabric and again we want to make sure we leave so we've got a loop and the needle and then our tail 
and then we just cut the loop cut the needle off and then you've got your thread which goes through to both pieces of fabric underneath so let me just do the other one I will show you how to take the pattern piece off so or you can you can just take the pattern piece off because we've cut all the thread so that will just lift off it's done don't need that piece anymore so I'll fold that up so then to so what we've done is we've got if you see here if you separate it goes through to both and you want to cut that so you've got thread going through both pieces of fabric so i'm going to cut it sort of halfway between so i've got my marking here now but also on this piece and that way you've marked both bits of fabric at the same time so you haven't had to do it multiple times which i find really frustrating and then these can just be pulled out when you've used them so this is for the hood so i'll match the notches to the collar and then i can whip these out and because they're white it's good to use a contrasting thread because they're white i can see them really easily on my fabric so i can whip them out as soon as that sounds rude but you know what i mean i can whip out the tailor's tacks once i've used them for reference and yeah so i'm going to carry on and mark the rest of my fabric as you can see on this one it makes a little cross on the back piece of fabric that's why I said go across and then across again. I haven't explained this very well, but you know, just Google Taylor's tacks. I might not even do them correctly. I Googled it and just, that's the way I do them. So I have to cut a piece of power mesh for the midriff section of this dress and this is the only power mesh I have. But tell me why does this go so perfectly? Like I actually love it and this will be on the inside of the dress anyway so it's kind of like a nice little surprise inside that only I will know about, well and you now as well. Well here I am finally feeling better and ready to tackle sewing again I was in a bit of a slump I just was really very like really very very tired and just I had to get through an entire week of work and I was just exhausted and I haven't had the time to sit down and think about sewing until now and last weekend I just crashed completely I just was on the sofa all weekend well I worked no, I didn't work last weekend. I had the weekend off, but I just was on the sofa, just just not thinking, watching stuff on TV, watching films, and just relaxing. And I really needed it. And then I had a whole week of work, which really wore me out. And then this weekend, now, I woke up this morning quite late. I had a really good sleep, though, and I feel better, normal, back to how I am. You know what they say, if you don't rest, your body will force you to rest, so make sure you're not getting yourselves burned out. Anyway, I am back. So we left off with, I'd cut out all the fabric, I'd transferred all the markings on using Taylor's tacks, I've just cut out the two bits of interfacing that I needed and I have ironed them on. I also cut out a small piece of power mesh to go on the midriff um a disaster hath strucketh when i was ironing on my interfacing um i'm sure you can imagine where the rest of the interfacing is that's right on the bottom of my iron so i need to get that off <sighs> i need a press cloth clearly because i misjudged the temperature and i left it on too long but the rest of it has been successfully ironed on 
this is just a facing so that little bit isn't really gonna make too much of a difference but the rest of them have gone okay um but yeah ironing you can see it's kind of affected the the velvet pile you see there this is all going to be on the inside thankfully but you can't have it too hot and yeah i don't like pressing velvet i haven't figured out a good way to do it so i just tend not to because this stuff doesn't seem to crease anyway um but it just means my seams aren't really pressed open because i don't want to mess up the velvet like that so yeah but anyway um i think the key is just to not leave the iron on too long because i've done this piece and as you can see there's no dodgy marks it looks okay i think we just need to not it's got the interfacing on just not leave it on for too long when we're when we're pressing and obviously do it from the reverse side not the not the side with the pile but anyway i am ready to start i don't know what the first step is so i'm going to consult the instructions because i've only made this pattern once before i'm going to consult the instructions and get started oh also i have one of my little labels ready to go in this it says it's going to be backwards but velvety cleopatra and then it's got like two little pyramids i had those made because i'm a total dork anyway let's go i forgot to tell you today i'm wearing another one of my charm patterns joan tops in this delightfully spooky fabric This is from Night and Fabrics, and I just love it. The weather is horrendous today. It is blowing a hoolie out there, and it's torrential rain, and it just feels very autumnal, which I love, because I'm all cosy in my house. So I thought I'd put my Halloween-y type top on. But I love this. I actually love this fabric. I actually love it. <laughs> okay, so the first step is actually the drama, immediately. So sewing the cowl hood. So I've got two sets of these hood sections, which have a narrow piece at the bottom, which is inserted into the shoulder yoke, and then a large curved seam along the top. So I've matched the two pairs together. Um, I've got another pair here, and then I'm just going to sew this on my overlocker because it's just a simple curved seam that I can just sew on my overlocker. So I've been very careful to make sure I've put the right pieces together um, because there is a front and a back to this and they are considerably different. So I am... So I have joined them along the centre seam and now I'm going to put the two pieces together because this cowl is self-lined. Um, matching the notches, so we've got single notches one side and double notches the other. So I'm going to match the single notches and pin that together and then sew along those sides and then the short ends will stay open. So this is the cowl hood, it's self-lined, so if we, I'm not good at putting this on as a hood to be honest. So it will sit like this and then these will go into the shoulder yoke and it will kind of drape down the back and then when you put it down it will just sort of hang, I'm terrible at this, you get the gist of it okay. So the final step was to just baste these short edges closed and that's all we're doing with the cowl hood for now. So this can be put to one side and we're going to move on to the bodice. There we go. Right, so I've got the bodice front pieces here with my tailor's tacks in. So I need to 
this way around. So we need to sew the front bodice between this circle mark down to the um, the waist seam or the waistband seam. So just from the circle down for now, that's all we're going to So I can take these tailors tacks out now because that was just the centre front. They don't need to be there any longer. Okay, so that's just stitched from the centre front down to the underbust seam. Now I'm going to put my gathering stitches in because I need to put gathering stitches along the underbust from this circle to this circle. I also need to put gathering stitches on the shoulder seam so between these circles and then I also need to do gathering stitches on the back bodice as well. So the shoulders and the underbust so we are looking like this so shoulder yoke underbust bit is gathered and I've also gathered the underbust well under under back <laughs> the back bodice there sorry so that's gathered at the back sort of under the where the bust would be <laughs> but at your back um, so now all the gatherings done it's starting to actually look like what it's supposed to look like so we are going to move on to the next step now so the next step is to attach the cowl hood baste it to the shoulder yoke so we have to join these little edges that we basted closed into the up here and the back so this edge where I put my pins, thank god I put my pins in there, that needs to end, that needs to go on the sleeve edge and then the neck edge needs to go on the, uh, the, the front of the hood needs to go on the neck edge. Now what I need to do is attach the front and back bodice together at the shoulders, so this piece with the hood attached now is the back and the hood is kind of going to be sandwiched in between the front and back so when I join the front and back bodice at the shoulders the hood is in the the seam as well I'm not explaining this very well but I'm sure you know what I mean so this is the front bodice now so this is going to go on here and it's gathered at the shoulders we're going to attach it and sew across so then the the hood is inside and everything's cleanly enclosed in the seam okay so progress so far it's going well we have the bodice sort of assembled at the shoulders anyway so you've got your cowl hood on the back and then if we turn it round we have the front let me just get my hands in the shoulders here we have the front yoke 
which sort of hangs down a bit like this with the gathering <gasps> this color is amazing oh my god it's coming up so nice it looks so good on camera with the light on it look at that <gasps> oh i love it i'm so glad i decided to cut it with the pile so when you put your hand down it's rough rather than smooth because the color just is richer like that that was a good move Gemma. well done <laughs> um but yeah, this is uh, it's going well. So next step, I think, might be putting the sleeves in. Exciting. This does come together fairly quickly. It seems like there's a lot of pieces and there's a lot of cutting out. I mean, the pieces you have to cut out are large, but totally worth it. Totally worth all the agonising climbing around on the floor. Okay, I was show you this here because you can get a better view this color oh my god mm, aggressive chef's kiss but look at it she's on emmy at the moment my skinny mannequin um and yeah the boobs are hanging out here because it's the weight of the hood but once the rest of the dress is on it actually the the yoke seam is sort of further down. i don't want to pull on it too much but the yoke seam is sort of further down it's like here and then that will come under the bust and you've got the waistband and the skirt. But the colour is gorgeous and the gathering at the shoulders, it just makes it look, it looks like money, okay? And I'm all about that. And then if we turn her around, you can see the cowl hood. The drama, the drama, oof. This is a new uh, a new perspective, isn't it? I managed to work out how to film overhead so I can actually show you more clearly what I'm doing now. So I'm, I'm attaching the facing and this is like a butterfly seam here. So you've got like four flaps, for want of a better word, of, of seam allowance here that you have to sew to the circle mark which is here on both sides without catching the other bits of seam allowance in so you kind of need to pull everything out of the way when you start stitching one side and then as you come round, pull it all the other way and end at the circle mark and then you get a perfect v so that's what i'm going to attempt to do right now <laughs> um it's slightly nerve-wracking <laughs> think we might be good here yeah i think with a bit of uh steam from the iron we might be pretty good there I think we'll have a look. I'll go and iron this over my tailor's ham while I'll steam it and see what happens. Excuse me. Can you get your head out of my handbag? This is day, I don't know, three maybe of uh, of this project. Um, probably more like day four actually, because I had a day cutting out, then I had another day cutting out and doing the tailor's tacking, then I had a day of sewing, and now I'm on the second day of sewing. So we'll, we'll call it day four. Um, and this is the progress behind me just most of the bodice um i need to attach the sleeves close the side seams i need to attach the waistband then i need to sew the skirt panels which have six go days in them <sighs> yep 
not a fan of sewing go days. I mean, last time I did them, the first one was okay. The rest of them turned out pretty good, but we'll see. They're quite fiddly at the point where they go in. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, plan for today. Try and get as much done as possible. I would love to get this finished today, but I'm not going to pressure myself to get it finished because I have been putting so much pressure on myself with self-imposed deadlines and I don't have an occasion to wear this for. So all I'm doing is trying to get it up on YouTube within a certain amount of time. And it's probably going to be a couple of days late because I need to edit the video. But that's okay. You know, no one's paying me to do this. So this is just for me. There's no point making it a, a pressured situation, you know. I think slow sewing sometimes is just what I need. And it's really good for my mental health. So... I'm just doing this slowly and taking my time. Next thing we're going to do is the the uh, the waistband. So we need to stitch the power mesh, my funky power mesh, to the waistband piece to treat them as one. I'll just take my pins out here. I've still got everything attached to the pattern pieces because. That way I know what everything is and I don't get anything lost. That's not too bad. We've got a little wrinkling here and I'm not sure why. I think the stitching looks like it got caught. It's puckered up a little bit, but it should be okay. This this will just be on the inside. So how nice is this pattern though? I really like it. Okay, I need to check what the next steps are. So the next thing we're doing is attaching this to the centre front of our bodice. It's a tiny little bit off center, but not so much that you'd notice. So I'm I'm okay with that. So I hope you can see this, but this is our front bodice now. So we've got our midriff section going up to a point. Um, that's turned out quite well, actually. Some of my basting stitches are visible, so I'm going to have to take those out, which is irritating. But the gathers look quite evenly distributed. I'm, I'm happy with this. I'm actually happy with this. I think this is looking great. Yeah. Um, so next, I think we're attaching the back. The back midriff section, which is here to the back, obviously. Um, and then. I would imagine the side seams are being closed up and then the sleeves being attached. And nicely gathered on the back. Very, very slight gathers on the back can't see my basting stitches great perfect so this is the state of play now we have a mostly constructed bodice we have the the midriff section on here you can see the middle is going up like it should when the weight of the skirt is on this will hold everything down so it sits properly got lovely gathers on the shoulder i just i just love that 
It just looks so like opulent, you know? And then if we turn around, we've got our lovely hood and the back midriff is also attached. So next is sleeves, then skirt, bish bash bosh, we're getting there. Oh, she's gorgeous. Mm. just slip stitching the cuff to the inside of the sleeve I think I've done quite a good job of that it's not my strong point hand stitching but you know I think that is actually pretty good um, so I just got the other sleeve to do and then I can set them into the bodice so we have the sleeves on the bodice is done <laughs> Leo, are you helping? Oh, it's a cat's life. So now we are on to the go days. So sewing in the triangular pieces of fabric into these slashes that we made into the skirt. Now, uh, this is the front part of the skirt. You're supposed to put interfacing at the top of the slash. So here, I don't know if you can see where my finger is, yeah, here. So you're meant to put a square of interfacing to stabilise that, but I can't iron on interfacing onto this velvet because if I put any heat on it, it will ruin it. So we're going to go without the interfacing. Last time I made this dress, I could only get the interfacing to stick. I actually did use the iron on interfacing and I could only get it to stick. Um, to like two of the go days so I and, and the others had no interfacing so I know that it will be okay without the interfacing um so I've got my go day here my triangular piece of fabric and what I need to do is match the circle mark with the top of the go day there So this is the Godet sewing. So the Godet is here underneath and I've got the skirt on top. So I've got the bit that I'm not sewing, the side I'm not sewing of the slit just out of the way. So I'm starting with my needle in the circle mark and then I will sew down. And as I, whoop, pulling my pin out, no. <laughs> as I sew down, then the seam allowance will start matching up then. Let's have a look then. Oh, look at that. That's pretty perfect, actually. I'm really chuffed with that. That's way better than any of the others I ever did. I don't know if you can see that very well. But that's like a... Oh, I'm chuffed. I'm so chuffed. Five more to go. So 
close of play on day four, I'm holding my phone here because I've been using it in a different tripod and now I haven't got my regular tripod set up so I'm having to hold it. Close of play on day four, I have made these skirt panels, inserted all the go days. I am ready to sew the front and back skirts together and then attach them to the bodice, leave it to hang, hem it. I'm pausing for dinner now. For some reason, it looks like I've been smacked in the face. My face has gone really red and hot. This happens sometimes when I'm sewing. Does anyone know what this is? I feel like it. maybe it's when I'm getting tired. I don't know, but it, it's very hot right now. Um, I have no idea why. Anyway, I am going to pause for dinner. Um, I'd like to say that I'll carry on with this tonight, but I might not. I might finish the so attach the skirt and pan skirt and back skirt and back the front and back skirts together tomorrow night when I finish work because that's like a ten minute job, and then Tuesday night I will attach the skirt to the bodice and leave it to hang. Wednesday is my day off. Hem it, film the reveal, and then. Dear viewer, don't be like Gemma. She is suffering from burnout and ignoring the symptoms. Edit this video and get it up by next weekend. So, bodice is all done. I'm just pinning the skirt together. And I thought I would just come on and just do a little bit of chat while I do that. Um, I've sewn one side together, so there's go days in the side seam. I've sewed those together and now I'm just sewing the other side. Um, I've been at work all day. It's now about 5.30 and I feel like I'm coming down with something and I'm not happy about that. Also, I think I'm just maybe just run down because I do a lot. As you know, I've told you I do a lot. You know, I work 40 odd hours a week. I study. Um, I'm also doing the YouTube channel, all the sewing, you know, and I like to make time for that because it's what I love. But sometimes it, I guess it is to the detriment of my health. Like now my face is burning. I don't know why. This has been happening in the last two days. Um, and I generally just feel a bit unwell. Um, this morning I woke up, I had a really sore throat. And I had a bit of a sore throat yesterday as well, yesterday morning when I woke up. Now, as the day's gone on, it's sort of eased off. But um, it's, it's lingering. So yeah, I don't know why I've got a hot face going on. Um, I actually felt really cold today. That's probably a surefire sign that I'm getting ill, isn't it? But maybe I can fight it off before it takes hold of me. Anyway, I'm going to stitch the last side of my skirt together and then attach it to the bodice. And then I'll leave it to hang overnight before I hem it tomorrow and finish this video and hopefully get this video up. Only a few days late. I'm sorry, I try so hard to do it on time. It's really difficult. drama I think I'm the drama I'm living my best witchy life here got my elder wand I know I am a nerd but you like that 
it's Leviosa, not Leviosa. Ah, I love this. Look at it. Oh, look at the hood. The drama. I'll see if I can go back. The light might go a bit weird, but it's very long. It's floor length. I don't think I can go back any further. Yeah, I'm at the coffee table. Floor length. I just love it. I just love it. I absolutely love it. It's just, the colour is so nice. The bishop sleeves, love. Should we put the hood down? There we go. So with the hood down, I can't get it to hang. It will hang more nicely. But I just, the gathering. Ah, the go days give the skirt like it's so full look how swooshy it is i absolutely love it i love it let me put you in portrait mode so you can see the full effect one moment do you see i just love it it's so like it just skims the hips this is a great dress it's so like just it's going to just emphasize every body shape i love it i actually love it <laughs> and i have made two of these i've got the blue one as well and do you know what i need a black one i want to live out my morticia adams dreams where are we let me sort this out Yes, I want to live out my best Morticia Adams life. Oh, come on. Look at it. I love it. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, let me go back to landscape mode. Anyway, thank you for being here with me for another sewing journey. I love to let you into my little sewing world and share the projects that make me so happy. Honestly, sewing does wonders for my mental health. I mean, you can see looking at me now compared to how I was earlier in the video when I was really quite run down. Um, I had a bit of time to myself, did a bit of sewing, and now I feel I feel pretty good again. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you again for being here. Please do like the video. Please subscribe. I'd love to have you here over 400 subscribers now i love you all thank you this is a very long video i am sorry also not sorry but yeah i'll be back again with another project soon and just thank you i love you all